switch to the in-game scene, and unpause the game. Alright guys, hello and welcome back to the best of, not it's not even a best of five, what am I saying? It's the fifth set, the fifth point even, in this set between Buzz and uh, Supermen. It's currently tied up at two all, with a pretty close set of games so far. Buzz managing to take the last two, with Supermen taking the first two. And this is the fifth point, the deathmatch element, and this will be played as a best of three to determine who actually gets gets the fifth point uh, on that board there. So this is a really important game and uh, this one could be, well, halfway there for one team to take the victory. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this one goes down. Uh, I don't really know how these guys will perform at deathmatch, but it's certainly going to be worth a watch. Down to the southwest of the map in the purple, we have got Buzz Blaze. He's playing as the Japanese and his teammate up to the northwest in the grey is Buzz Grippen. Uh, Grippen is playing as the Persian. So it's going to be that Persian uh, Japanese mirror once again. Up to the northeast of the map in the red, we've got Taurus playing as the Persians. And down to the southeast in the yellow, we've got Quicksilver playing as the Japanese. Now, so far, these teams have been fairly evenly matched, it seems, in skill. So I'm hoping that these deathmatch games will be fairly stalemate -y and uh, something a little bit more exciting than what we've seen so far. Obviously, some of the games that we've seen so far have ended up being really quick five minute to seven minute games and that is I think less likely to happen here though I may be wrong of course so the Japanese are facing up in the south and the Persians are facing up in the north. Gripen here going for quite a few castles already going for five castles immediately straight off of the blocks and he's going to be making some of those war elephants of course. Seems like a different strategy altogether for Taurus here. Taurus starting with halberdier and camels and he is basically making everything anti uh, to cavalry that he can. So obviously elite war, uh, war elephants are classed as cavalry and uh, these guys are going to be countered quite heavily I feel by the halbs and the heavy camels of Taurus that he's starting to spam out already. Now it's kind of unusual because when we watch deathmatch it's usually the Persian player making as many heavy uh, scorpions and elite war elephants as possible but in this situation uh, Taurus is going for a completely different build and as a result he does have a lot more population out on the map. Blaze coming up to the north though to help support and uh, Taurus gonna have to run back there he seems a little bit outnumbered at first glance but he has got a lot more units waiting in the wings and he's starting to make some war elephants of his own. In the south both teams are very reluctant to really go out and attack too hard Blaze playing pretty defensively up here, but that's obviously due to the fact he's sent a lot of his army up to the north as well to support Gripen here. So, bit of a big fight with Halberdier. Unusual to see that many Halberdier engaging all at once, and Blaze going to lose the majority of that army there. There was no follow-up from Gripen or anything like that. Gripen just massing up his war elephants, but neither team seemingly getting super aggressive just yet. Quicksilver actually making a push in the south, but running into quite a lot of heavy scorpions. Let's be honest, there's a lot of heavy scorpions there and uh, those champions and samurai getting pushed back pretty quickly even though they were attacking downhill they are being pushed back due to the sheer amount of firepower that those scorpions have. Quicksilver here adding in some scorps as well but onagers coming up already for him and those onagers are going to be the things that really make the difference in this game. Buzz uh, Blaze at the moment actually slinging Gripen a little bit. Of course, the Persians require so much food and so much gold to keep this war elephant army going. And that is going to be so crucial. Seems like, though, on the south, that Blaze losing quite a lot of his siege. Both these guys now building the siege uh, quite a lot. And uh, obviously, Quicksilver with those onagers has got the potential to take down a lot of these scorpions from Blaze. Blaze doesn't seem to have too many land military footmen out but he is pushing that back and that castle is now under quite heavy fire Blaze losing most of his army it seems aside from the scorpions and those scorpions laying down so much damage on the front but that onager there it's still alive and uh, Blaze is not taking it down of course Quicksilver attacking downhill at the moment managing by the looks of it to take down that castle at the back and meanwhile in the north huge huge numbers of war elephants pushing forwards 
Griffin looks like he's massively outnumbering Taurus at the moment. And looking at that population tab, I'd like to have a quick look at that. Uh, 119 population for Griffin versus 70 from Taurus with a massive 30 or so population advantage on the military. So that, that military really looking good, but whoa, the Onager shots are real. And it's a shame there's no Siege Onager here because that would be huge for the Persians, but highly imbalanced. The Heavy Scorpions though, got to be one of my favorite units in the game. And these elephants just mashing each other like crazy so far. we got some Siege Rams coming in though for Griffin here. And that means that these castles will slowly start to fall as Griffin holds on the front pretty well by the looks of it. Left side, or the south side even, Quicksilver holding out for now, but Glaze should be able to climb that hill, and that hill is going to be a pretty big deal because no one wants to be attacking uphill. Blaze building a castle immediately on the top as soon as he can. And he's got a ton of trebuchets right here. That is a lot of trebs out for uh, Blaze at this point in time. That castle's up though, and it will obviously help Blaze to push forwards. But Blaze is much further, or much further behind Quicksilver in terms of population at the moment. Quicksilver on 122, with Blaze just on 100, so quite a big difference there. But in the north of the map, that is looking very bad for Taurus. I just had a Wallolo though, and uh, Pelican RW donated $3.85. Shout out some from Singapore. Thanks for many hours of entertainment. Well, thank you, Pelican, for watching, and uh, thank you for letting me entertain you, as uh, Robbie Williams would say. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, thank you very much, man. Thanks a lot. Um, so yeah, looking really good for Gripen in the north. He is uh, pushing those castles down. Of course, those castles really vital for both Persian players. Gripen has a lot of momentum there, and it doesn't look like Taurus is going to be able to get enough of those elephants out in time. At the south, it's still looking, well, reasonably good for Blaze. He's taking the population advantage again. He's spamming more siege, and he's starting to continue that well he is just continuing that push sorry a lot of eco coming up though for the buzz guys in fact they're both on about a hundred eco units at the moment with a lot of villagers coming out for those guys but that's the gg there for quicksilver and taurus meaning that superman will go down one game buzz gonna get the first game in the best of three deathmatch element and that's kind of good for them that's going to put them in a very positive situation for game number two. But still, I do think that it could be reasonably close still. Because bear in mind, it is still 2-2. And if Superman win the next game, it will go to the third and final game. However, if Buzz win the next game, they will get the final point and it will go to 3-2 to Buzz. And obviously, Buzz are really going to want to do that. They did look very promising in that game. They did build up their economies much faster with Blaze having 100 villagers at the end there and Gripen having 97. So it was very, very fast for the Buzz guys to get their eco up. And that's exactly what you want to see in Deathmatch. And these guys just seem to have a little bit of an edge with about double the population as well of their opponents right at the end of that game. So anyway, we will see then how the next one goes. And I'm going to load it in immediately. Game number two there. And let's see how this one goes down. Down to the south of the map then in the purple. We've got Blaze playing as the Aztecs. Oh, this could be bad news. Up to the north of the map, we've got Bad Trip playing as the Koreans. And that is Team Buzz on the left of the map. Up to the northeast in the yellow, we've got Quicksilver playing as the Aztecs. And down to the southeast in the green we've got Taurus playing as part of me as the Koreans uh, for team Superman so this is going to be potential uh, a potential sorry for a very very quick game we've seen already how the Aztecs can do huge damage with their Eagle Warrior and unfortunately Quicksilver did not set his Eagle Warrior to aggressive stance meaning that Bad Trip's been able to get a military unit out meanwhile in the south Blaze harassing those villagers trying to prevent them from building their buildings but this time uh, we're not seeing such a huge mistake as we saw Always do in the previous deathmatch game where we had Aztecs where uh, Always was playing Byzantines he tried building a castle and then the Aztec scout just came and destroyed everything he had so 
unfortunately, this time, both the Korean players have defended from that Eagle Warrior coming in at the start. And that's probably a damn good thing, because otherwise they'd be in a pretty bad position at the moment. We've got Bad Trip going for Champions as the Koreans to counter those Eagles from Quicksilver. And we've got the same for, um, I believe, Taurus in the south. Taurus as well going with those uh, Champions. I did hear some hand cannons, though. Taurus switching into hand cannons pretty quickly. And I think that obviously um, those eagles are at a lot of risk here. The Koreans should be a pretty big powerhouse in the late game. And although they can do those champions to counter the eagles early on, their champions are missing that final attack upgrade. And um, they are obviously uh, going to be able to do a little bit of damage, but just not quite as much as they would perhaps like. Both Aztec players though are going to struggle slightly here due to the fact that yes we have got siege onagers out 8 plus 2 range on those guys and we are seeing some hand cannons coming out as well um, so the koreans obviously very strong obviously the uh, aztecs down here getting that 8 plus 2 range as well on their siege onagers due to the fact that that is a korean team bonus that extra range and actually that's the point both teams both teams have two civilizations with the siege onager available uh, obviously we have blaze opting for those siege onagers a little bit sooner in the south of the map here we'll see how devastating they can be as blaze probably kills off a ton of his own units but also kills off these hand cannons my goodness me they do a, a huge amount of damage as blazes siege on just get taken down taurus coming through with those champions of his own but blaze switching into champions as well obviously the aztec champion far far beats the um the the korean champion 13 plus 8 attack for the aztec champion 13 plus 2 now in the north bad trips holding out for now both guys in the north have those siege onagers out but the koreans i think should be able to counter the eagles pretty easily and obviously they both have that uh, that insane range the eight plus three range on the korean onager my bad and uh, eight plus two for the uh, siege onagers of the aztecs so the koreans i think should have a natural advantage in this game but yeah, there's going to be a lot of Siege Onager action on the map. But that castle going down immediately for Quicksilver in the north. But then saying that, Bad Trip down on population versus Quicksilver as well. In the south, we've got Taurus um, just holding his hill for now. But so, so many Siege Onagers out for Blaze at the moment. My god, that is just a non-stop torrent of Siege Onager fire taking down some trees in the process as well and I'm surprised to be honest with you that Taurus is not holding on very well here at all uh, the Korean player should have the advantage I feel in this situation they have more range on their siege onagers and they have access to the hand cannons to counter the uh, the infantry but blaze just spamming so many onagers here starting to push forwards with those guys but losing a lot of them to the onagers from taurus on the hill those onagers up there a little bit of extra range and starting to take those onagers down uh, i honestly feel like the korean siege onager has the potential to win this game alone and there we go they're just rolling in taken out about five siege onagers in a single hit that's the most amazing thing about them they're just devastating and whoa that's a lot of pikemen from quicksilver there that is a lot of pikemen uh, obviously the aztecs do miss that last um pikeman upgrade they don't get halberdier but they do get more attack due to their unique technology which adds plus four attack to all of their uh, infantry but even still, like I say, the Koreans, I feel, should have the advantage. And so far, Quicksilver is, uh, sorry, uh, Taurus here is losing out to Blaze, who's claimed that hill, taken down that castle, and is continuing to focus down those Siege Onagers from Taurus wherever he can as well. Siege Onagers devastating, though. They are so devastating. Eco then is looking pretty good for the uh, Superman team at the moment, actually. They have got 50 Eco units each, with Bad Trip and Blaze falling behind there quite considerably. In the north, Quicksilver pushing forwards with a lot of pikemen. But we know what happens when a lot of pikemen meet a lot of onagers. The pikemen get flattened and destroyed so quickly. Oh my goodness me. So many onager hits there. Not a single pikeman made it to the siege onager line. It is an absolute massacre. 
Obviously the war wagons from Bad Trip coming out now though. And I think it's the war wagons that are really going to help in this situation. War wagons counter quite easily by pikes. But we've seen just how easily those pikes go down to everything else. War wagons can actually tank the Siege Onager shots. They have 200 health and 8 pierce armor. So they've got a little bit of tankiness here. And I think that tankiness is really what is needed. Uh, this is just like a huge area of the map where anything in the middle just gets destroyed due to the fact that there is just so much Siege Onager fire coming out. We've got some of these Elite Jaguars coming out from Blaze as well. Interesting decision, but dying pretty quickly to the hand cannons of Taurus here. Taurus slowly but surely losing those castles, and I feel like he is letting them go down pretty easily. Which is pretty bad for him. Bad news for him. Bad trip in the north. Continuing to push forwards. Taking advantage of that extra onager range to flatten three with one. Three for one rombo combo deal there. And uh, Quicksilver just managing to snipe yet another. But hey, you're not, you're not out microing that. Um, man, Siege Onager is just so devastating. Quicksilver at the moment just 16 military units. The yellow player here with 16 military units. Versus the 95 military from Bad Trip. And it looks like Bad Trip might just be about to finish this game off. Obviously, Treb's deploying in the center of the map. These TC's going down and a lot of villagers with it. Quicksilver killing his own units there in that fight. And probably killing his own Siege Onagers as well. That's the one downside to Siege Onagers, I guess. Friendly fire is on. And uh, it's horrible when you end up killing half of your own army with your own Siege Onagers. This TC in the north going down. And it looks like Quicksilver is unable to hold out against this onslaught. The Korean player in the south though, Taurus, seems to be pushing back a little bit against Blaze. And like I say, I feel like the uh, Korean player should have a natural advantage in this game. And so he is managing to hold on for now. But Bad Trip is storming through. Trep's continuing to deploy, continuing to take down these buildings where he can. And there's just a few Siege Onagers out for Quicksilver at the moment. Just six population for him. Now Taurus sending over a bunch of hand cannons in tight formation. This can only end badly, I swear. Once those Siege Onagers start firing, this can only end badly. This shot right here, bam. Oh, Oh my god, it missed. I can't believe that. That shot though, that was the meat shot. And uh, Quicksilver and Taurus losing way more than they can handle at this point in time. More and more Trebs going forwards, more and more Siege Onagers. I think that's literally all you need. Just the more Siege Onagers, the better at this point in time. Certainly seems to be that way. And Blaze starting to, uh, sorry, yeah, Blaze starting to lose his castles here even. Taurus managing to just about push them back. But yeah, Koreans can just sit on a hill and use that extra range to camp. Camp the hills like crazy. And that is uh, kind of exactly what Taurus is doing. Inching his way forwards, taking the occasional pot shot from the bottom of this hill from Blaze. But it's going to be very difficult for Blaze to push up against this now that those Siege Orangers are out for Taurus. And of course, if he keeps making war wagons as well, he can tank those Siege Onager shots a little bit more as well. But in the north, Bad Trip taking out way more than Quicksilver can reproduce. And Quicksilver is losing so much ground, he's got no military units left at all. And that is 200 pop for Bad Trip, 200 pop for Blaze, versus the 200 pop in total for Taurus and Quicksilver. So Buzz about double the population of Superman at the moment. And uh, it looks like with Quicksilver falling back like this, it's going to be very difficult for him to uh, regain control of his base as Bad Trip continues to storm through. Getting very close to the trade line now as well. The trade, of course, coming up for both players very quickly or both teams very quickly. Uh, very important to get that trade up as soon as you can. Yes, Blaze having a little bit of a tough time pushing up this hill here. And it's a perfect place for Taurus to hold out. But if this castle goes down, then he might be able to spam some units up. And he's already sending some of those eagles up the hill into a wall of hand cannons. Hand cannons destroying them in an instant. But there simply are too many eagles there for Taurus to hold off. And that castle looks like it's about to fall. Even the Siege Onagers taking pot shots at the castle now. And Blaze pushing up in the south. Of course, Taurus cannot spare any military to go and stop Bad Trip, who's on a rampage in the middle or the top of the map. 
taking out the rest of Quicksilver Zico wherever he can find it. And uh, yeah, Quicksilver's down to 45 population, zero military. Taurus on 15 military. And it is pretty much over at this point in time for the Superman team. Very well played by Buzz in this set of uh, deathmatch games. So many trebuchets deploying. So much gold to burn, it seems, as those trebs immediately fire at that castle, and wow, okay, no, they don't. They fire not at the castle, but at the Siege Onager. Obviously, get your priorities right. That castle's going to fall very quickly, though. The Siege Onager's just popping out from Taurus here, getting a bunch of kills on this Siege, of course. But hill advantage for Blaze means that he will get more overall. And there is the GG. A very close set of games. Finally down to the wire. And that last game won for Buzz. Meaning that they will win this set of games with a 3-2 victory. With a 2-0 victory in deathmatch. It looked like the Buzz guys did have a lot more experience and a lot more, you know, they were a lot more comfortable with those deathmatch games. It certainly did seem like they had a big advantage from quite early on. So, very well played to Buzz and they are going to go through, uh, well, not really go through, they're going to go through their first group match I guess with a victory 3-2. Of course it's not a best of five so it's not like they won a best of five series but they did get more points so at the moment Buzz obviously going to be slightly higher in that group than the um, Superman team but well played to Superman did do a very good start to this series of games with a 2-0 start but Buzz pulled it back good comeback from them and with two very good deathmatch games they will seal the deal and get a 3-2 victory so I'm looking forward to seeing more games from these teams obviously these have been the closest games we've seen so far in the group stage and uh, there will be a lot more close games as well just this first week of course with a lot of 5-0 victories so far rather unfortunately I guess but uh, we're going to come back now and we 